Hello, I'd like to thank Dr. Soledad Romero for inviting me to present today. Uh, this is work that was first conceptualized in uh, Baltimore, where we both worked together, and uh, which, but which has been carried out subsequently in Brussels, Belgium, with my co-author, Lavinia Postolash. It's about brushfield spots and wolfland nodules uh, unveiled. As you may know, Brushfield spots were named as the, after the English psychiatrist Thomas Brushfield, who first described them in a 1924 thesis as white spots of varying size uh, encircling the mid periphery of the iris and the majority of only lightly colored irides in children with Down syndrome. The histopathological examination revealed them to consist of a condensation or mound of collagen tissue, but it is relatively normal or a mildly hypercellular iris stroma, we see here, surrounded by a hypoplastic iris. These brushfield spots could actually be considered a variant of smaller spots noted more peripherally and the lightly colored irides of individuals without Down syndrome, which were described as Wolfland nodules described in uh, 1902. So here, this is a picture of uh, Wolfland and here of uh, Brushfield, Thomas Brushfield. In Down syndrome, the spots are mid periphery and larger and lightly colored irides best seen. And in normal eyes as Wolfland noted, 10% of the normal population with lightly colored irides will have these more peripheral spots noted that are somewhat smaller as well. But these brushfield spots became quickly known and appreciated, hence as a sign, a diagnostic indicator for the anomaly that was then called mongolism. And until karyotyping became widely available, and until this was understood, Down syndrome was understood to be caused by three copies of chromosome 21, every medical student had to learn this sign because it was what was used to detect in a newborn whether they might have mongolism or not. So in the top picture, we see the Wolfland nodules in the periphery that are seen in normal individuals. And these larger, more mid-peripheral iris nodules are the so-called brushfield spots seen in mongolism. They are distinct, but imagine having to make this call in the nursery when you're not too experienced in the matter. Not always very easy. This Diagnostic sign is not used hence very much anymore, and it's only taught out of historical um, interest. Nevertheless, the frequent incidence in Down syndrome, as well as their occurrence only in lightly cured, colored irides, has remained enigmatic. And in fact, Brushfield uh, saw these spots 10 times more frequently in blue than in brown eyes. And, and hardly ever saw them in uh, brown eyes, as a matter of fact. Now, David Donaldson in 1961 created a specialized high intensity flash and specialized camera system and was able to note some brush field spots in eyes that otherwise did not show them under slit lamp illumination. This customized apparatus uh, wasn't replicated by others and the study never repeated, but it did indicate that perhaps brushfield spots were present in darkly colored irides, just very difficult to note. With the newer technology that we now have available in most of our clinics, infrared wavelength light is easily accessible and it is easily tolerated, employed for iris illumination and identity screening in the general population, as well as for iris crypt-based video oculography to measure ocular torsion. But it has not actually been applied as a means to investigate the iris itself. Yet melanin is transparent to infrared wavelengths. And so infrared would be ideal to see whether 
melanin is blocking the visibility of brush field spots or not. Perhaps this could be a tool for some iridologists who wish to enlarge in their market. Their infrared light source we used was a non-midriatic fundus camera with an infrared light source used to illuminate the anterior segment of the eye for patient positioning purposes prior to obtaining fundus photographs. The camera itself that we had did not allow for infrared photography because there was simultaneous triggering of a xenon flash at the moment when fundus images are acquired, washing the iris image out. So what we did is using the infrared light positioning source of this fundus camera, we then took a ordinary smart form camera to obtain images right off the screen monitor linked to the fundus camera itself. So any of us can do this in our office as long as we have an infrared light source. So we took iris photographs of 43 children with and 43 controlled children without Down syndrome, taken both with standard visible white light at the slit lamp, as well as with the near infrared light using the fundus camera patient positioning beam. And those with lightly colored eyes with iris spots or nodules already visible in standard white light, we could not detect additional spots or nodules using the near infrared wavelengths. So as we see here with regular white light, we saw the nodules and using near infrared light, we saw them as well, but not any more nodules than we otherwise would have. And the same goes in this patient here. We see the brush field spots in this Down syndrome patient. We see them in near infrared light as well. But what about the darker eyes? Well, we get here begin to see some differences. We can see some brush field spots that we would have missed otherwise in near in regular light. And in a darker iris yet, we see brush field spots much more clearly, in fact, that we would have missed on regular slit lamp examination. And yet in a darker eye still, we cannot detect any brush field spots in ordinary white light, but with near infrared light can make them out quite easily. In other words, the darker the eye, the bigger the difference between white light and infrared light illumination, as we see here in these patients with Down syndrome. When we tabulated our findings, we found that those with blue colored irides had uh, as many brush field spots as uh, seen in infrared light as with white light. And with hazel eyes, we saw twice as many patients to have brush field spots than if we used white light. And brown eyed patients, we never saw the brush field spots with white light, but in 18 patients, we did with the near infrared light. So to conclude, brush field spots are indeed also present in darkly colored irides perhaps just slightly less frequently than in the lightly colored eyes, nonetheless. We noted the same phenomenon for the so-called Wolflin iris nodules present in 10% of normals that are easily seen in those with blue eyes, but never seen in those with dark eyes unless infrared light is used. So, it, it seems that both brush field and Wolflin nodules probably develop through a common physiologic pathway. What could these iris nodules, present in 10% of the normal population, but more frequently noted, over 80%, and larger in Down syndrome, actually signify? What could be the responsible gene located on chromosome 21 that is triply expressed in Down syndrome? trisomy 21. Perhaps that could be the subject for another talk as we continue our research next year. Thank you very much.